Cells or prisons have always been a place of punishing offenders, but some cells do more than mere incarceration. From the grim solitude of Aylesbury Prison in the Victorian era, where inmates languished in isolation to the brutal and racially charged atmosphere of Walnut Grove Correctional Facility, this journey uncovers the harrowing realities of juvenile justice. These institutions and the stories they hold are both shocking and enraging. Let's dive in. Another example of a facility facing similar challenges is the, the Wabash Valley, the correctional facility in Indiana, which is located in the countryside south of Terre Haute in Haddon Township, Sullivan County, Indiana, has a complex history marked by both innovation and controversy. Known for its specialized approach to inmate rehabilitation, the facility houses a special needs unit, a mental health treatment program designed for offenders with severe mental illnesses. The SNU employs a phased system, tailoring treatment and rehabilitation plans to the specific needs of each participant. Despite its promising programs, the facility has faced significant challenges. Inmates have raised concerns about deteriorating conditions, culminating in a hunger strike organized to demand urgent reforms. The strikers sought three primary changes, removal from constant video surveillance in monitored cells, protection from abusive staff, and an end to the tampering, confiscation, and withholding of their mail, which further isolated them. This protest was not a rash act, but a desperate response to ongoing issues within the prison. One of the hunger strikers, Shaka Shakur, a political prisoner, brought attention to the harsh realities of solitary confinement in Indiana's secure control units. These isolation cells under 24-hour video surveillance have been criticized as a form of psychological torture. Beyond the inhumane conditions of solitary confinement, inmates also faced a deeply flawed disciplinary system. Reports filed by guards often resulted in severe punishments, including prolonged isolation. With no opportunity for appeal or representation, the lack of accountability and transparency in these proceedings underscored the systemic issues within the facility. The prison also made headlines in 2023 when Richard Allen, the suspect in the tragic Delphi murders of Abby Williams and Libby German in the 2017, was transferred there. Allen's attorneys raised serious concerns about his treatment at the facility, claiming it was far harsher than that of other pretrial detainees in county jails across the state. They argued that these conditions not only impacted Allen's rights, but also hindered their ability to provide effective legal representation. His case drew attention to broader inconsistencies and allegations of mistreatment within Indiana's correctional system. Wabash Valley Correctional Facility's dual reputation, both as a pioneer in mental health rehabilitation and as a site of significant inmate grievances, reflects the larger struggles of the prison system to balance order, accountability, and humane treatment. Brinsford Prison Young Offender Institution Brinsford carries a heavy legacy as a male Category B and C prison and young offender institution, YOI. Operated by His Majesty's Prison Service, Brinsford opened in 1991, but its early days revealed a troubled foundation that would shape its reputation for decades. By 2001, an inspection exposed serious shortcomings. A negligent regime failed to address the needs of its prisoners. High rates of self-harm, widespread fears for safety, and a pervasive culture of bullying loomed over the institution. In response, efforts were made to reform Brinsford. Two educational blocks were added in 2002, emphasizing rehabilitation through education and training. However, issues with security and inmate welfare persisted. In 2003, the prison made headlines when four prisoners escaped after attacking a guard, stealing keys, and scaling the perimeter wall. The incident underscored severe flaws in security and staff oversight, drawing further criticism. By 2014, Brinsford had reached a critical point. Chief Inspector of Prisons Nick Hardwick condemned it as the worst facility he had inspected since taking office in 2010. His report painted a bleak picture, graffiti-covered cells, broken windows, and filthy conditions that left many areas uninhabitable. Worse still, the prison had failed to address issues raised in a previous 2012 inspection. In nearly every respect, conditions had deteriorated. Hardwick described the findings as the most troubling his inspectorate had ever encountered in a single prison. Outcomes across all four key tests of a healthy prison were rated as poor. Francis Crook of the Howard League for Penal Reform called for Brinsford's immediate closure, citing the unsafe, violent, and ineffective environment revealed in the report. She criticized the government for wasting public resources and jeopardizing young lives by locking teenagers in such dire conditions, often confining them to their cells for just 10 minutes a day. 
Brinsford's struggles reflect broader issues in youth detention. Similar criticisms have been leveled at other institutions, such as Hong Kong's Lai Chi Rehabilitation Center, highlighting a global crisis in the treatment of vulnerable young offenders. Aylesbury Young Offender Institution, His Majesty's Prison. Aylesbury, a historic Category C training prison in Buckinghamshire, England, has a long and storied past. Established in the early 19th century, the current Victorian era facility has been operational since 1847, evolving through various roles over the years. Located on Beerton Road, north of Aylesbury's town center, the prison is managed by His Majesty's Prison Service. Its history stretches back to 1810 when an earlier prison occupied the site. Throughout its existence, HMP Aylesbury has served as a county jail and adult women's prison from 1890, a girls' borstal in the 1930s, and briefly as an adult male prison between 1959 and 1961. Since 1989, it has exclusively housed long-term male prisoners. However, its reputation has been marred by controversy, particularly during its time as a young offender institution, where it faced severe criticism for brutal and inhumane conditions. Young inmates endured near solitary confinement, locked in their cells for up to 23 hours a day. Official reports revealed that many received less than an hour of daily out-of-cell time, fueling frustration and worsening behavior. The lack of meaningful contact, forced isolation during meals, inadequate hygiene opportunities, and limited telephone access to families exacerbated the situation. Some inmates went days without showers, further degrading their living conditions. Inspections revealed that between 30% and 42% of inmates were confined to their cells during the day, a systemic issue that, combined with staff shortages and high levels of violence, created a volatile environment. Violence was a persistent problem, with one in 12 inmates serving life sentences. Managing such a population proved extraordinarily difficult, and the institution often resorted to punitive measures to maintain order. The British Medical Association and other leading medical organizations voiced serious concerns about the use of solitary confinement at Aylesbury. They highlighted its severe psychological toll, including an increased risk of suicide and self-harm among isolated inmates. By their standards, solitary confinement was defined as any physical isolation depriving individuals of meaningful human contact for extended periods, a practice widely observed at the facility. David Liddington, the local member of parliament, acknowledged the challenges faced by staff managing some of the most difficult young offenders in the country. Many inmates had committed serious crimes, and while the staff demonstrated professionalism in their work, the environment remained fraught with tension and difficulties. The issues at Aylesbury are emblematic of broader struggles within correctional systems worldwide. The institution serves as a stark reminder of the complex challenges involved in balancing order, rehabilitation, and humane treatment within the prison system. HMP Park's juvenile unit, located in Bridgend, Mid Glamorgan, Wales, has faced significant scrutiny for its treatment of young offenders and the conditions endured by those detained there. Operated by G4S, it is the only privately run prison in Wales, offering a distinct model of incarceration. The prison's origins trace back to January 1996, when it was developed under a private finance initiative. Built by the Costain Group for £82 million, HMP Park opened in November 1997 alongside HMP Alt Course as one of the UK's first privately financed and owned prisons. In its early years, HMP Park faced substantial challenges. A 1999 report by Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons highlighted critical issues including security technology failures, anti-English racism from Welsh inmates, and a troubling number of suicides. While a 2001 follow-up report noted significant improvements, the prison remained under scrutiny. By 2004, an independent monitoring board described HMP Park as the worst performing privately run prison in Wales and England. Failures included the persistent inability to fill its 28-bed juvenile remand unit and meet contractual obligations. Alarming reports of victimization among young offenders also surfaced, with nearly two-thirds of boys surveyed, stating they had been targeted by their peers. The juvenile unit, while commended for efforts to improve behavioral standards, revealed a darker reality. A 2017 inspection report detailed disturbing levels of abuse. 44% of young offenders reported being victimized by staff, 63% by their peers, and 37% disclosed physical assaults. Although violence had decreased, the levels remained unacceptably high. Inspectors urged the institution to address the unsafe environment and the prevalence of bullying. In response, the prison implemented new initiatives, including 
surveys to capture the experiences of boys, their families, and caregivers regarding bullying. HM Chief Inspector of Prisons Peter Clark acknowledged efforts to improve conditions. Among the most notorious is Brinsford Prison Young Offender Institution, infamous for its harrowing conditions. Often described as a hellhole, Brinsford has become a symbol of mistreatment and abuse within the juvenile justice system, serving as a grim reminder of the urgent need for reform across such facilities.